Good morning. Like Jonathan said, my name is Cameron Ziegler. I'm a senior and a lifeguard. Um, so I want to start out this morning by reading Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. It says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. So in this story, there's a man who builds his house on the rock, and it stands, and a man who builds his house on the sand, and it falls. Pretty self-explanatory. But like all stories, there's a lot we can learn from this passage if we look a little bit deeper. So the first thing I want to point out about this story is that the only difference between these two houses is their foundation. A lot of times when I picture this story, I think of the wise man building this really nice house and then the foolish man just building some dump on the sand. But the Bible doesn't say that. It, the only difference the Bible distinguishes is their foundation. But that one difference is what completely changes the outcome of these two houses. The foundation is what causes the house to either stand or fall. The other thing I want to point out about this story is that the house on the sand did stand until the storms came. So the foolish man may have thought he built a good house. He may not have realized that his house was not sturdy until storms came and tested it. And the same thing is true in life. You may be building your life on something that isn't sturdy, and you may not realize it until storms come, until t hard times come, and all of a sudden you're realizing that your foundation is coming out from under you. So I want to start out by asking you this morning, what are you building your life on? What are you placing your trust in? What are you anchoring yourself in? Because it's easy to get distracted and start building on something that isn't sturdy, something that can't support you. And you may not realize it until storms come. Recently, I went through a storm of my own, and it was a challenging time for me. But through that experience, I started growing closer to God and trusting in him more because of it. So what happened is I was playing soccer. I got hit in the eye with the ball. And at first I think, oh, no big deal. Like, I've been hit 100 times before. But I open my eye, and there is a big spot in my central vision where I can't see. And I think, oh, that's not good. That's not supposed to be like that. So I wait a week, and it doesn't go away. So I end up going to an eye doctor and finding out I have a hole in my retina. And I need surgery to have it fixed. And this is really not good news for me because I don't like doctors or needles or eye drops or any of that stuff. So about a week before the surgery, I start getting more and more nervous, but I also start spending more time with God. I start pressing into him, anchoring myself in God. And then God helped me get the surgery, and I, I grew closer to him through that experience because I was anchored in him. But oftentimes when we go through storms, the world tries to distract us and get us to place our anchor on something that isn't sturdy, that can't support money or popularity or possession or career. And these aren't bad things, but they can't support us because they will always, always fail us. Only God will never fail us. And when you build your life on God's love, you will never be shaken. Another time you need to watch out for distractions from the world is when there is no storm, when the water is all calm and there are no waves in sight. Because in the, in the good times, sometimes it's tempting to pull up your anchor, to kick back and read a good book, but that's when we drift. Boats drift. And if you're not watching, you could drift out into the middle of the lake with no spot to lay your anchor, with no foundation. And then you're, more, um, you're in more danger than ever from the storms. So you need to make sure that you're anchoring your life in God through the storm and through the calm water, in good times and bad times in life. So when you anchor your life in God, how does that change the way you live? Well, when you put all of your hope in God, he will start working in your life. He'll start moving through you. One perfect example of this is the 12 disciples. These are 12 men who run and hide and say they don't even know Jesus when he's arrested. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead, and we see 12 completely different men because they put all of their trust in Jesus. We see 12 men who go out and tell everyone they know about God, and they turn their world upside down because they're anchored in God. And God wants to do that same thing in your life. He wants to take wherever you're at and change your situation. He wants to turn your world upside down because of you. 
And if you let God take over your life, nothing will be able to stand against you. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But the key part in that verse is through Christ. If we try to do it by ourselves, we're going to fail. But if we're anchored in God, that's when he's going to work through us and do incredible things in our lives. So put all of your hope in God and follow where he calls you, and you will do amazing things through your life. So make God the anchor of your life. Thank you.